Hi, everyone. Uh, we are very happy and very glad to start now the third uh, session of the uh, afternoon. Uh, uh, we are uh, very grateful to be joined uh, uh, by uh, three uh, uh, amazing uh, change makers in their respective capacity. Maybe a fourth one will be joining uh, uh, later in uh, uh, in few minutes. So this session will be dealing with the use the mindset for sustainability and inclusion, uh, uh, as we are. Uh, facing uh, 2020 is a year of uh, a lot of uh, disruption, a lot of challenges, uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, raising awareness, it is bringing people uh, more uh, inclined to solidarity, to walking and finding the, the ways and the solutions of tomorrow. And this edition of CGF is special. Uh, it's a special G20 edition. And so we will learn from each of our speakers as well uh, from their past, their personal journey, the concrete actions that they are undertaking. And at the same time, the recommendations they will uh, gladly formulate uh, to our audience and as well to governments around the planet. So let me introduce uh, our, uh, uh, our speakers. Uh, uh, very happy you know, to have uh, a, 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 a strong friend uh, uh, in the person of Alexander Shishlik. So Alexander uh, uh, is making us the pleasure to, uh, to join us from uh, UNESCO, where he has been uh, involved for many years, contributing in the fields of uh, youth and as well in the fields of sports. Uh, a great uh, humanist and uh, a great advocate of uh, universal progress uh, uh, in the international bodies of UNESCO, but as well beyond uh, uh, beyond that. As well, we are uh, very happy to be uh, joined by uh, Nikita. Uh, Nikita C is an Indian-based space enthusiast. It's uh, uh, the the person that will bring us, you know, like from uh, Earth to the sky. Uh, uh, Nikita, she is uh, uh, as well, you know, like uh, the founder of uh, the uh, Space Education Research and Development uh, uh, Entity. So she really is going to try and she is trying to bring the young generation uh, 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 into, uh, into space. Uh, lastly, uh, we are uh, joined by uh, Tessica Twong. So Tessica uh, uh, is uh, uh, thinking the cities of tomorrow, the ways uh, uh, we are going, you know, to find more balance uh, 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 in the way we are uh, living. She is the co-founder of uh, City Hive uh, Vancouver, uh, uh, and as well, you know, like she is uh, involved in uh, uh, many uh, 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 commitments. Uh, uh, we understand that uh, Tessica uh, uh, wants, you know, like to uh, serve uh, uh, in many ways, you know, like uh, a public service and making, you know, like contribution uh, uh, around her for the sake of uh, uh, everyone. So let's get started and uh, let's start by uh, uh, the, uh, the woman. Uh, let's uh, be on the stream of women empowerment. So uh, uh, Tessica, you, uh, uh, you, you are, you know, like joining us, I think from uh, Vancouver today. So where, where does it start? It? Where is your passion started? Uh, uh, you are a multi-entrepreneur, multi-contributor. Uh, when I check, you know, like your profile, I was saying, wow, uh, uh, I'm, I'm so late, you know, I am <laughs> I'm so late. It's never too late. <laughs> uh, I have to do more, you know, I have to do more. So wh wh where, where did it start in? Absolutely. I think for me, it's a fundamental injustice. And, and, you know, while I'm an advocate for youth and youth inclusion, making sure that young people have a voice at the table, I often say that it's actually really about building intergenerational spaces, bringing different generations together. Because so often when there are intergenerational spaces, there is a power dynamic where the folks who are older, you know, are the, the teachers or the bosses, their parents or the coaches. And so that it doesn't necessarily allow for that honest conversation across generations. Um, and so that's really the work that we did here and that the work that we continue to do um, at City Hive and so many other spaces where I work to really make sure that youth not only have a seat at the table, have a voice at the table, but they also have spaces to really build power, to build um, a sense of solidarity with one another before, before they go into spaces um, where there might be power dynamics as well. Um, and what I was hearing over and over again with City Hive and this organization that I was building was this fundamental need, this desire for from cities and civic institutions that were 
asking, like, where are young people? Where are the next generation? What are they doing? And how can we get them to get involved with these challenges that we have, whether that be climate change, whether that be homelessness, opioid crisis, like so many different challenges. Um, and on the flip side, I was hearing from young people, like, we want to get involved. They were starting their own clubs, their own organizations, their own social enterprises. But there was a deep need to really build and to bring those communities together and to find ways so that there would be meaningful and reciprocal relationships where young people and decision makers could come together and really build the future that we want. So thank you so much for having me. And, and uh, I'm really excited to have this conversation with such amazing panelists as well. Well, Desika, thank you very much for, for the passion you just expressed and, uh, and your commitment, which uh, I think is very promising for, 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 for the future. I turn myself now to uh, the one that is going you know, to bring uh, the democracy, you know, like to uh, reaching the space. Nikita, so uh, when, when is it uh, uh, ready for us to, to fly to the moon or, or something <laughs> like that? So, so, so where, where did it start as well for you? You know, like you are uh, amazing people today. For me, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, for me, it, it kind of started with like, uh, my house is pretty close to the airport. So every day, uh, seeing all the airplanes take off landing, kind of created that interest in me. At the same time, uh, yeah, in India, we have uh, one of the huge uh, uh, role model for us, uh, who is the Dr. Uh, Kalpana Chavla. She, you know, I, I hope all of all of us know what happened to her. But yes, we are all so, uh, you know, we all grew up reading her stories. And in fact, we have ISRO, which is one of the uh, huge motivation factor for all of us here to to look and do something uh, in the field of space. So all this combined together, I really wanted to study about aerospace. And then I, when I started studying, I found that a lot of my friends who got into engineering were thinking that they would study about stars and planets. So what I saw there was they really didn't know what they would study or what they could do after they finished their studies. And to solve that problem, we were start we started looking for a solution. And I had my friend who is also the partner um, at our organization right now, Sujay Shridhar. So we both kind of worked on various solutions which we can think of, and we found that uh, the the best solution is to reach out to those young students, like young minds, in fact, who are dreaming of getting into this field and tell them what is what and how could you benefit out of it and what are the different paths that you can take to reach that goal. So if they know all these details, I'm pretty sure they can achieve all those dreams that they dreamt of. So that's how it started off. And uh, today, again, like we're a bunch of young people, like the eldest one we have in our team is 27. So that's that's how we all work, connecting uh, the people, the students, in fact, around the world today, um, telling about space and telling the importance of space applications like today, how we're using the net banking or the live program that we're part of, in fact, the weather, everything. We, we are living our life every day uh, with the help of space technology and, and application. So we want to tell people how important it is. At the same time, inspire students to come up with different solutions and space-based solutions to the challenges that we're facing today, like be it the climate, the water problem, or like, let's say the climate, uh, as, as I said, the climate, and in fact, uh, the urban cities, the, the problems that urban cities face, everything. Uh, so that's, that's what we are working on. Thank you very much, Nikita. Thank you very much. And I hope your friend, 27 years old, is not considered an old person. Uh, uh, so I, I turn myself now to, to Alexander. Alexander, you, you have, uh, along you know, your contribution at UNESCO, supportive, uh, supported you know, several generations, several you know, like, uh, 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 talented you know, uh, of the youth from across the world. Uh, where did it start, uh, Alexander? Because this is a public service for uh, many years uh, on many aspects always you know like with a, a positive mindset to give the chance for people with uh, initiatives and, and i can testify of that myself so wh wh where where did it start in alexander 
Well, thank you, Jonathan, to ask me that. And I, I, I'm so impressed after having uh, listened to your two uh, speakers because, in fact, they encapsulate where we want to be, but uh, the, we have to walk the talk. In fact, we are an intergovernmental organization, and you know our Amanda, the education, science, culture, world heritage, science. We do a lot of things, tsunami preparation, water management. You, you can name it. That's, that's not the issue. But UNESCO was built by elders. It were all elders in the, in the 40s that built this organization. There was no young person there around at all. And then there were some NGOs that were associated with UNESCO that we listened to. But in fact, the elders and the adults of my generation, they never knew how to really work with young people. And I must tell you, it still is not a given. Uh, we talk about meaningful youth engagement and uh, civic engagement of young people. But the society in which and the politicians with which they are supposed, with whom they are supposed to engage, are not prepared for that at all. My generation, I'm sorry, I mean, now I work on it, so I can tell it's, it has to be, but it is not a given. So we have about 20 years in UNESCO reviewed our youth engagement screens uh, all the time, all the time. Uh, Jonathan has been witnessing our youth forum, and that had also taken different shapes. It was by the member states who just wanted to have a kind of political forum to sit at a young person who has been there and have a youth voice with the flag before the person. Makes no sense at all because the member states will never pick that up. But then we found out, I mean, we didn't find out, we simply applied it, that youth, in fact, have the answers, have the solutions, just like you said now. And that is the, that was the, that triggered a whole systemic a revision within UNESCO in our trans strategic transformation process that is going on, that we have to give a bl place to youth. And of course, it's not about political decision making, about drafting resolutions and all that, like the uh, official youth would do. It's about co creating, co shaping, co developing, co learning, co evaluating the interventions. And it's not it's not your world of the future. It's not you in the future. It's your world. Because also the demographics, the demographics are uh, so terrible uh, that the elders that we, that I represent, have absolutely, they bring in wisdom, they bring in negotiating power, but the solutions are in your hands. And now with COVID, we have witnessed so many thousands of stories of civic engagement initiatives and um, scientific ones, uh, human ones, in, in everything, in education, everything. So, Everything is out there. The problem, and that's why I finish, is that we need to negotiate the space that you have mentioned, Jessica, and that the space is not given. It must be a safe space. And in not every country, this space is safe. Uh, you can't say what you want in every environment. So it must be safe in that possibility. And the, what you mentioned also was very interesting about the horizontal way of the young people come to a certain understanding of the issue and then they go up to the next level and they are taken seriously. So it's not only to stand up with the flag and say we have to do this and that, you have to come up with the solutions. So the transition between when I was a boy in 1968 and we had the, the big revolutions gone on with young people on the street towards today, 40 years later, is amazing because young people are now taking part of, in the solution. Last thing I want to say, because that was just the last thing, I'm admiring that science and technology does appeal also to girls and not only to men, which is also one of these uh, strange prejudices we have. Girls shouldn't be what you're doing. So I'm, I'm extremely pleased that you show this as an example. Sorry, it was a bit long, um, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexander. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Tessica. So if we go now into the concrete uh, initiatives that you are uh, uh, supportive, uh, uh, supportive of and 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 their respective impact uh, uh, for for the youth and as well uh, uh, beyond for for society. What what could you share with us? Absolutely. And so in Vancouver, like many major cities around the world, we've been struggling with a housing affordability crisis, right? And so one of the first projects that we tackled at City Hive was really to, to bring young people who have been impacted by housing affordability crisis, the, the housing affordability crisis, and to bring them together with folks who've been working in this space, whether that be Housing BC, the city of Vancouver, um, like Landlord BC, the Real Estate Foundation, and bringing together actors who've been working in this space for a very long time so that they can help pay 
acute in understanding the landscape of the context of what's going on. And so that young people can see the gaps and the opportunities to really build new policy solutions, new recommendations, new social enterprises that can really come up and either stand alone as a new project or really be nested within existing organizations and initiatives. Because I think there's no need to, to reinvent the wheel. And yet, um, I think we were tired of really hearing this narrative of the millennial exodus, that city young people were being pushed out of the cities, like I think really to speak to Nikita's the urban issues that we face because of affordability, um, but actually changing the narrative to say, actually, we have agency. And if we found a way to stay within the cities, maybe we have some of the solutions, some of the policy solutions, a lens, um, some insight for policymakers that they don't necessarily see because they come from a very different worldview where home ownership is, is kind of the predominant form of housing and the way of living. And we know from around the world that there's so many different ways, whether that's cooperative housing, co-housing, um, whether tiny homes, I think we really share sharing models of much more community living um, that doesn't necessarily look like a single um, detached home. And so I think it's really like bringing and showing the value that young people, but that citizens have to inform and to shape their cities and their and their decision makers as well. And I think exactly to Alexander point, Alexander's point is like, there's so many spaces where, um, you know, young people are not included. And it, even if they're included, it, it's in a very tokenistic way. And I've been really appreciative of, the, of this talk and of this conference, because I've seen that there's been so many young voices, you know, that's not a, just a single one that has the pressure of representation, of representing a whole generation. That's not possible, right? We know that there's such a diversity of passion and interest and perspectives from any generation. Um, and so it's really about creating spaces where young people can come together, build build power, build a sense of, of mutual understanding of, and what of what they need and so that they can advocate then collectively, but with a sense of agency and also credibility and that validity that like this came from community, this came from our conversations um, with each other, with our peers and, and with other folks and the solutions that were built and that came out of it and informed, you know, whether it's the city, the province, the national government's policies on energy or housing or many of the issues that we've worked on. Um, I think there, there, there are solutions that actually benefit across generations, right? And um, there's a very famous um, city, city planner, city maker, Gil Penloza, and he talks about building cities for people who are 8 to 80. Because if you build cities that work for folks, you know, whether they're kids or they're older, but the, really the most vulnerable, you're building a city that's inclusive of um, everyone across those ages in between. Well, I, I like very much your, your concluding words, you know, a city of inclusiveness. Uh, um, and uh, we, we can add, you know, like transgenerational. Uh, I think, you know, we have to really, you know, like learn uh, mm -hmm. to uh, live uh, together and uh, uh, to uh, uh, learn from each other uh, on, on both ways. And now, now it's really, you know, like happening because uh, technology-wise, uh, uh, sometimes the, the the child is teaching, you know, like the the, the parents or the grandparents, and uh, and, and, and and so this is. Uh, a complete, you know, like a rebalancing of the cards. At the same time, uh, uh, I think, and that's maybe a, a, a question, a follow-up question for, for, for all of us. Uh, uh, it's it's the young people uh, uh, have to learn from elders uh, uh, because there is wisdom. You know, we, it's not like just uh, 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 we, we we are new, we are uh, energetic, and, uh, and and we go for it. I think it's it, it, the, the wisdom is in both. You know, we have to find the, the right uh, alchemy between uh, the elders, their wisdom, and as well the, the energy and talent and creativity of, of, the, of the young people. So thank you very much, uh, Tessica. Uh, 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 Nikita, so how, how are we going to fly? How, how are you going to make it fly, you know, for uh, all those uh, uh, young people around the world? I, I want to know because uh, uh, I, I will not maybe join the first, but uh, if it works well, maybe Alexander and I, we can, uh, <laughs> we can try. <laughs> Yeah, sure. It's you, we can just look at what has happened in in previous uh, just few years, or like let's say recently we celebrated fifty years of landing on the moon. Now imagine what could happen in another fifty years. For sure, uh, not us. Probably our children would 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 we, we know no we don't know but yeah there is a possibility that they could go and land on or not just land but leave on moon and mars now coming to that point um, to make that happen there are so many things that has to be done way before like the technology aspect like uh, 
it's it's so different uh, both moon and mars it's completely different from earth so we really need to come up with whole new set of technologies the way um, we're going to live in the houses is going to change and the way we're going to dress up is, is going to change the food so many things are going to change and for that we need to start working on it and i think if if we all start working on it for with all with all the new technologies is when the future generation are going to use and uh, we we, we uh, like as you just said like we need to take the learnings from our elders yes uh, they are they are the you know we got to learn from them and that's when we could reach out to all those things it's not just about going to space for us in in the space industry one of the major thing that we are facing right now is 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 on how to take care of our earth right so so there is like half bunch of space industry where they are trying to solve the problems that we are facing right now here on the earth uh, as i said the climate in fact the internet like this this no proper internet throughout the world so yeah internet is one challenge where we're trying to provide the solution and we also found a space based solution for agriculture like a common person like a farmer and a fisherman can make use of the space technology and that's that's the uh, that's the beauty of uh, space in fact and uh, we recently heard the news of uh, collaboration cooperation with the help of the iss agreement which we just finished 20 years which is again an example for people in the space industry or people outside the space industry to think or to to just work in a collaborative way because yeah if if you all know how to progress one of the factor is by collaborating and space is shown to the whole world these are the few things that we can learn and and use to work on to reaching the moon and mars yeah wow what an agenda you know it's a uh, it's uh, we, we are ready we are ready it's uh, uh, first of all i think you know like uh, uh, what you say is uh, very, you know, like uh, uh, promising for dreams. I think the, the new generation uh, uh, and all of us, we are facing, you know, many uh, current practical situations and uh, uh, having dreams uh, is the best driver, is the best fuel. Uh, 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 by the way, it's a, a biodegradable, you know, like fuel. It's a, it's a, it can be recycled into other dreams and, 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 and it, it helps us to grow. It helps us to to move forward. So, uh, Nikita, I, I I think you know like uh, what you do. Uh, you have really to keep doing, and uh, you have to keep spreading because uh, yeah. uh, uh, we need you know we need dreams, and and the dreams come from people. You know, they come from initiatives. Yeah. They come from actions. It's not just the dreams we feel. Sometimes uh, the curiosity among the students to do something and uh, and i think and and i've seen most of them telling space is something that curi that creates that curiosity among the students which just lets them to start liking the science and math because uh, we know how students like as as we all as a student there was some time where we used to kind of hate science and math but but this particular field of uh, you know science that is particularly space just makes us love all this subject and and kind of create that curiosity which in fact kind of improves the academics of all the students and this is something that we have observed uh while teaching about space among the students thank you very much nikita thank you very much uh alexander uh, uh we know you are doing with your team so many so many things uh uh, uh it's difficult to enumerate all of them, but if you could, you know, like share with us, you know, the current initiatives uh, that mm -hmm. drives your passion. What what will be? Uh, what's yeah, I, I mean, whatever we do is, in fact, in order to help youth occupy the space that is yours, that is theirs. And I wanted to mention there are a few things that are uh, it's the enabling environment you would call it. Uh, and start with the education system. Just after what we have heard about the space technologies. The education system will probably teach you science and maths and will say then you are good. But there is no other discipline where you need creativity more than in sciences. Science is always about trial and error and, and going out going out of the path. 
And you do not learn this with the, with the, with the traditional disciplines. You have to do the arts, you have to do music, you have to do meditation, you have to do uh, sport, you have to do yoga, that is so fantastic in India. You have to be able to be assertive of the ideas that you bring forward to society. If you just copy what the others tell you, it makes no sense. And that is the responsibility of the school system. So UNESCO promotes global citizenship education that you would understand that you would, it's about all these things. And there are many, many soft skills and competencies that you have to bring on board. And if you are in a school and you only have you hear one music or one language, it makes no sense. You have to be really adapted to the variety <clears throat> and the region of society. And just to give you a personal example, my daughter is a, is a civil engineer, and before she started to be a civil engineer, we thought she would have a she would have a literature a literary career or something like that. And she is so happy to be an engineer because every day she has to solve about twenty problems in her company, and this is fantastic. And you don't learn this if you are not creative. You don't know that. So that's one thing: the education system. The second system is the societal change, and it's a pity that the World Assembly of Youth is not with us at this very moment because they are assembling the youth councils in the world to see how to acquire this space. And that needs competences, which as I tell you, told you. So we have tools where we can go to a audience with public uh, authorities and youth and negotiate the space, how to occupy that. We even teach now our staff in UNESCO how to do that, how to overcome the gap. And we do now, uh, develop these tools that we have developed within UNESCO to offer them to the whole United Nations system, all the organizations want to work with youth to understand where the gaps. And when you go to a specific country and there's absolutely no understanding, yes, I do talk to youth, but they don't really take on board what young people do, then you see there is a gap. So the assumptions have to be revisited. That's the second thing. And, and the third thing is to allow ourselves to sit down with a young person and challenge the, uh, the conventional wisdom, to challenge that. And that is, in fact, happening. And it's so fantastic with COVID, we learn that. This is so disruptive, COVID, that you, you see with society that your generation is now wanting to do the whole things differently, what we call build back better. You would do things completely different from scratch when you are in lockdown and when you see that how, what's really needed, and what are the social bonds? What are the social bonds? You, would, you don't even understand him any longer in this rapidly uh, developing world. All these things are assets in society that now in COVID the young people bring forward. It is fascinating to see. We will, of course, not be able to, work, to, 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 to turn the world upside down. But I think in the next weeks and months, we will learn so many things. We have launched a, an initiative, of course. We have all the COVID stories. Everybody tells its stories. But we have in, it launched an initiative where we have selected from about 6,000 young people in the world, 300, all about all regions, in order to make the research into how COVID affects certain uh, aspects of society. So it will be young people, 20, 22, younger, younger, who will be guided by university uh, conglomerate in order to do research. And then we will have the research results early next year, and we can then bring them up collide them and create policy dialogues with young people. That's how we see the world. So it's just a few of the examples, uh, if you're not done. But I think we are we are pretty well there, but we can't, of course, uh, change it. It's, it's a process. We have to walk, to talk all the time. And the good thing is when you will meet someone like Oriu uh, and Jonathan, this is already done. But uh, uh, the elements are not always there. Over to you. Thank you so much, Alexander. Thank you so much. And uh, I, I, I think here, you know, like the, the key pillars are education, research, and science. Uh, 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 those are, you know, like uh, ingredients, you know, for uh, building up the case for uh, self-motivation of people, self-motivation of the new generation, because uh, the best driver is not what we tell people to do, is like they have the curiosity to uh, uh, be motivated to discover it by themselves, and and uh, I must say I I I find that myself, you know, in uh, what I'm doing, you know. So sometimes uh, uh, people tell me something, but when I really have the curiosity, wow, the energy we can deploy, you know, like and now with uh, 
internet with uh, all those uh, change makers around the world that share their passion that share you know what they do the methodology the element and and, and so i think the, the world uh, uh, as a whole has increased largely you know within this uh, very challenging layer you know of uh, uh, self confinement uh, but we 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 have found a way you know like to learn and sometimes uh, not to say bad things about Netflix, but uh, 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 we have to look as well on Netflix on the documentaries. <laughs> we have as well to look on the uh, uh, things that might be, you know, like a curiosity and just uh, uh, make up our mind on that. So I, I, I think uh, to to have a, a representative, Alexander, of, of this knowledge like you in UNESCO is a great chance for all of us because your commitment is... Uh, 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 purely, you know, like genuine and and the passionate toward, you know, the impact for the next generation. So thank you, Alexander, for 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 what you are uh, doing. Uh, uh, I, I will go now to the, the the main agenda, the main topics, you know, of of of, of these, you know, like uh, CGF, which is the special edition before uh, G20. So, uh, Tessica, what will be, you know, like a, a concrete recommendations or, or wishes? If you have, you know, the wish list. Uh, uh, for you know, before the end of the year, what will be the wish list for governments uh, to take attention of, of what you have experienced over time? Absolutely. That's such a big question. And I really, really appreciate it because I think what we need more than ever um, is to have spaces that have the diversity of lived experiences and really questioning and starting with who will be the impacted the most, who has been impacted the most by these policy decisions in the past. Um, and for me, I'm calling in from the unceded territories and the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. Um, these are the first peoples of the land here um, that we now know as Vancouver in Canada, um, but they've been here for generations generations and generations before us and, and for a very long time have been systemically excluded. And so, you know, when I do talk about youth engagement and bringing in, you know, young voices to the table, I also think always about who else isn't here, right? Whether that's Indigenous people, whether that's Black folks, whether that's people of color, whether that's people who are two-spirited, LGBTQQIA+, like it's really, I think, important to have that diversity of perspective because really that's diversity that exists in, in our society, in whether that be here in Canada or globally around the world, we have have such a multicultural society and if we don't have folks with the lived experiences and those cultural backgrounds those generational perspectives uh, at the table inevitably you know some voices and some perspectives are missed and so it's a very basic principle but i think this concept of like nothing about us without us and really trying to center those this the communities and the people who have been traditionally marginalized um i really like that that uh um, alexander you brought up the, the the topic and like the movement of build back better like really looking at you know actually while there's been a pandemic that has made us pause and has you know um for once you know, the economy has had to stop so that we can really prioritize human health and particularly those like seniors and folks who are immunocompromised who are most vulnerable. Um, I think it's also a realization that for a long time, like there have been, there have been many other crises for people, right? And so how can we not just go back to, to, to um, you know, the status quo to what has been happening in the past? Um, and I think it's in this moment too, where we've, we've finally had a global, a collective attention for, you know, Black Lives Matter, right? What happened in the States uh, with George Floyd is, you know, something to different extents that actually has reverberations around the world and especially here in Canada. Um, and so really figuring out, so, you know, what are, like, as we build a, a world um, that is more sustainable, that is more just, um, finding climate solutions that will also really solve the equity challenges, the poverty challenges around the world, and really finding solutions that are win-win-win there. I think it's really bringing that intersectional lens that we're not just looking for solutions to bring young people to the table, but other other folks who have, who traditionally haven't been invited to the table, and also building solutions that will build a better world, but it will also support um, the folks you know who haven't had a voice, but also who have been historically very marginal marginalized. Th thank you very much, uh, Jessica. Thank you very much for uh, uh, those very you know like uh, concrete words. Uh, uh, Nikita, from from your perspective, if you have you know like some uh, some recommendation or wishes for governments around the planet uh, to support achieving your dreams, uh, among others, uh, uh, what will be those uh, those recommendations? 
Yeah. So for, for us over here, um, or be it anywhere, I would strongly support for STEM education because something that's missing in past few years, when I say um, let's go back to centuries back, we used to have the greatest people who used to have background in at least three different sector. Like I can say three, three totally different sectors. And that's how skillful they used to be. That's how knowledgeable they used to be. But we look at today, uh, like we just think of, okay, one is like more than enough. And at the same time, for the current generation, we should support the STEM education. So this is something that I would like to keep in front of the government, be it uh, national or the global, I would strongly suggest STEM education or hands-on education. Uh, that that's that's something like has to be brought in the education policy. And in fact, that recently happened here in India, which we are very happy. About. But this has to continue until even the higher education. At the same time, for me, um, something that that just bothers me or I'm, I'm concerned of is it's the education system which which is overlapped with the caste based um intakes right so there are a few places where students to uh, take up particular course or or the way they work i, I want to kind of um uh, i don't know if it is in my power but i really want to abolish them and totally give based on their uh, ability right and at the same time the, another most important thing for me is uh, the women or the girls getting into uh, doing what they want because again this is something that stops most of them and i want the whole community to be part uh, of this of, of this you know uh, like just help every other girl and woman in case if they are willing to grow that's all is what i'm trying to look uh, or kind of uh, expect the changes in the world yeah thank you thank you Bye. very much for, for for sharing those thoughts uh alexander you you are uh, familiar with uh, uh, multi stakeholders you know like discussions and uh, we know the world to improve has to make steps uh, forward you know like uh, maybe new ways to collaborate uh, what might be your uh, your uh, kind, I would say, advice or recommendation or thoughts uh, 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 for governments around the planet? Well, um, the G20 is a highly political process, and also the agenda of the G20 is, of course, uh, uh, prepared by the host country, and it changes a little bit every year. But uh, we have been following the youth engagement schemes with the G20 over the last uh, three, four years. Uh, with the NGOs that, and, the share, and the youth sharpers that have been appointed in each of these countries. And we have tried to um, widen the, the consultation base in the different countries. It was in Canada, it was in India, maybe you were not involved, but there was it widened a little bit the space of, of consultation about the issues. And it's quite interesting, the, the kind of things that people say in the, school, uh, in the schools or in the universities are a little bit different from the uh, from the language of the politicians, of course, and uh, they have a, a, a sharper view on the issues. They would attack the issues maybe from a different angle, but of course, to make this reality in a, in a G20 outcome doc document is a bit different. But there is now a trend, there is a trend that the youth is taken seriously within the G20, and that's fantastic. And this will uh, even develop also in the next, uh, in the next iterations, in the next uh, country, in the next uh, Italy, and, 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 and India later. Uh, so that will certainly happen. That's good. What we are proposing to the G20 is really um, not to make the COVID crisis uh, the moment where the uh, inequalities are exacerbated. The fact is that youth is losing out, not, not that youth is losing out simply, but they are the ones with the most precarious jobs currently. And mind me, you are probably extremely privileged, not because of uh, where you come from, but where you are, you are somehow a little bit protected in the system uh, where you are, somehow. But there are many informally employed young people who are simply losing out. 
and um, that also has to do, and all the inequalities are ex exacerbated. You just mentioned a few LGBT, gender, elder, disabled, whatever. All these, all these uh, strata of society that are not the strongest or they're not the best, and not in the mainstream are simply left out. And we will, we will, we will move back in a, in a, in um, in levels of development that we had, especially social development, not technical and the economic development. It's about the social development might be we might run uh we might step back on that and the young people are extremely outspoken on that you can't imagine how many voices we collect from young people in our networks about these issues it's not about uh, i need the uh, economic i need another supermarket i need more industrial growth they talk about the social issues they want to uh they, they, in this crisis the voices that come up are about how can I trace my backpack my, to my, my grandparents? How did they do that? How did this, how would they have lived this crisis? My grandparents who didn't have all these little gears we have. It's fantastic the kind of things that come up. So in the G20, um, there must be a kind of um, uh, um, uh, message that you cannot build uh, back with you. Do not talk together with you. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a simple message. And then, of course, propose the different solutions that young people are bringing up in that in that neighborhood, and that is not at all um, uh, biased by my generation in the in the community. I have and then mind me, I also have to tell you that all the research tells you that young people are com uh, are very uh, much um, um, distancing themselves from political authorities everywhere. Uh, they do not trust. They do not trust the, the parents. They do not trust the institutions. They don't trust the multinational companies. They don't trust the politicians. They don't trust anybody. They trust themselves, and they they develop this trust also horizontally through the social media, which is a completely new pattern with which to have to deal now when we take decisions. So you are not just anywhere nationally integrating them, but there is a really horizontal web. Of, of young people and what Greta Thunberg has done from Sweden in the climate change shows how fast such ideas can spread and, and, and really young people are ready uh, to take it. So you can no longer deal with the issues of the world without them. And in climate change, just to finish that, because the last panel was on climate change, there is no other consolidating element in the world today than climate change. This is the number one, but with a large distance, uh, 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 with the next one, ne next topic, it's the number one issue that every young person in the world wants to deal with today. And I'm sorry, they are not invited to deal with that. The, 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 the negotiations don't allow it. And it is very important that as, like, as the G20, these issues are mentioned. And the, we can't just be politically correct, say, yeah, yeah, it's being done in another agreement. This has to be put on the table everywhere. This is the number one concern of young people, besides everything else. And this is stunning to see that, because I inherited a world that was beautiful and clean, and I had beautiful dreams, but your generation can't say this any longer. So it is a real issue that I have before us. Sorry, that I'm. that was my opinion. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, well, uh, Alexander, thank you for sharing your uh, personal thoughts and and your deep thinking on the on, on that. I, I really think that uh, uh, the message we we have to uh, uh, really you know like point out on what you say is to build up the future. Uh, uh, we cannot do it without involving the youth. Uh, that's a very strong message uh, uh, of yours. And yes, we have to uh, uh, find a way. It's not easy, but find a way to make sure uh, the voices uh, uh, of the new generation, uh, which is the most ready and most uh, willing to tackle the climate change issue, uh, uh, be be at the table. You know, we 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 have to find a way, and um, uh, I hope uh, 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 this message will be uh, will be heard. Uh, we are now going to uh, uh, go for the round of concluding. Uh, uh, thoughts. So, Alexander, I will start with you. Uh, uh, if you have the message uh, uh, to share with the citizens this time of the world uh, uh, to give us a little bit more hope, uh, what will be uh, that message? Okay, um, the world has been challenged. It's under a huge challenge, and this chaos, chaos is the Greek word, is also helping us to rebuild. That's what it should be. It's like you disconstruct and reconstruct. Um, 
it is the feeling is that of course the the the, the, the pillars of our societies are all in place are very strong in place uh, the economic systems the political systems everything is placed and that shouldn't be displaced now that's not the idea but we should with the with the acquired institutions and the rights that we have all been fighting for get to the next level and not stop from getting advancing to the next level and there are millions millions of solutions out there that are in the hands of young people to build better from this to build to get out of this crisis to build better and take into account the more uh, just equitable and uh, uh, also transparent world in many ways so young people are very good at that so take them on board when building better better thank you thank you very much thank you very much equitable and transparent worlds uh, 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 if we involve the new generation. Thank you, uh, Alexander, for uh, sharing that uh, very powerful thoughts. Uh, uh, Nikita, uh, what will be your uh, uh, concluding uh, uh, remark, uh, as well a hopeful message from you? Yeah. Yeah, for, for, this is for students like, you know, uh, or, the, or the youth who who always want to do something in their lives. And then there are so many factors which stops us, like be it the uh, the education or be it the personal problems like financial problem, be it uh, the moral problem. Like if someone is doing good, then there are so many people who kind of uh, pull you down. So this is this is for everyone who are getting into one or the other problems like this you literally need not worry about any of these things at least for sure not about others you just need to think of you and just achieve what you want like my grandfather tells me all the time that uh, if, if you know if something is stopping you just take one step ahead and see what what happens i'm pretty sure you will be there where you want to go so this is for everyone if someone if something is stopping you just take that one step you'll be there and that's what has happened to me every time i get stuck i'll be like give one one last try and yeah i think i've i've, I've got that yeah all the best that's all i can say <laughs> yeah so 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 nikita the, the the secret is actually we have to jump that's correct <laughs> jump. I, I wouldn't say jump, but just go give a try. One last try. Yeah. That's that that's superb. That's superb. Thank you for uh, for, for, for sharing that uh, philosophy. I, I will look at it as a philosophy. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, if we have as well, you know, like uh, worlds, you know, to, to, to share inspiration from Vancouver. Vancouver mm -hmm. to the world. What 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 will be those worlds? Yeah, I think Vancouver and within Canada as well, I think there's been so many changes because of the COVID pandemic that like, I think um, we were just told it's not possible. It's not possible to do this. And then within the span of a very short time period, like our country, our province, our city came together and made so many changes to really support, um, you know, the folks that were most impacted by COVID, the people who've been working on the front lines, taking care of the folks who've been sick. Um, and I think it's just really sparked a new hope, a new inspiration about what is politically possible. You know, I think people often say like, it'll take years for anything to happen at the political level. And we know that we simply don't have that with um, with the climate crisis, but with so many other intersectional crises as well. Um, and so I think really to take, take this moment to really think about as we're planning the restart, as we're deciding, you know, where large sums of money, large sums of, of resources are going to be directed, like who can we prioritize? How do we prioritize that? And how do we bring young people who have such a powerful vision, so many dreams, so many new ideas um, into the space in a way that's equitable, in the way that's um, sharing power sharing a voice and really bringing um, young people, not just as um, folks to come and learn, but as equal players. Because I don't think young people are the leaders of tomorrow, they're the leaders of today. And I really, really love the message that you're sending Nikita to like young people around the world to really believe in the power that you have already as a young person, as a student, as someone who who has so much to offer and to bring in this world. Um, and I really invite um, folks from older generations to come and to teach us and to share with us, but also to really make sure that we're sharing power as well because i think at the end of the day it's really about 
do we have a say in, in the future in our lives? Um, do we have a stake? We have a stake. Um, so I think invite us to the table so that we can really speak and we can learn and walk this journey together. Well, Tessica, thank you very much. I, I will quote, uh, young people are not only the leaders of tomorrow, they are as well the leaders of today. I think that will conclude uh, uh, this uh, passionating session. Uh, uh, I'm very, very happy and grateful to, to have uh, uh, listened uh, to uh, the three of you. I think uh, our audience uh, from more than 30 countries have uh, felt the, the power of change in your words, uh, in your passion. Uh, I want uh, to thank each one of you. Uh, Nikita, thank you very much for sharing the dream uh, of uh, uh, flying over and uh, connecting to new perspective. Uh, Tessica, thank you for uh, sharing your passion to uh, make the change happen uh, uh, on the concrete steps uh, uh, in uh, uh, the municipalities, the cities, the where we are living and uh, where we might uh, grow our next generation of children. And Alexander, thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, sharing uh, uh, the transgenerational, you know, like wisdom, as well as the empathy uh, that you have uh, very deep uh, 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 in yourself. Uh, thank you very much. This concludes this uh, uh, session of the CGF uh, uh, online special edition G20. And uh, we look forward to uh, continuing the dialogue with each one of you uh, offline in the coming days, coming weeks to help uh, uh, build the world of tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, ladies. Thank very much. You. Bye -bye.